Audio Jungle. He's an IT administrator, a developer, and a pastor in the making. Amen. Uh, he fellowships at Nairobi Baptist Church. That is Paul Moshe for you. And um, Paul Moshe, Karim Sana. Let us appreciate him even as he comes. Let's believe as we pray. Almighty Lord, we are thankful, we are grateful so much for uh, Paul Moshe, even as he speaks your word to us, so oh God, may you lead him, may you use him, O Jehovah Adonai. I pray, Lord God, that uh, whatever word is going to be spoken in this place, O oh God, it shall be from you, Jehovah God, for the honor and glory of your name. In the name of Jesus, we pray and believe. Amen. Amen. I praise the Lord. Are you going to appreciate him also? Thank you, God. Uh, 
Thank you for that kind introduction. Um, it's a joy to be back home. Mkokoa, uh, how are you doing? I've missed two people, uh, but it's a joy this morning just to be here with you and also to open the scriptures uh, together as we share from the Word of God. So the topic of today is uh, the true vine uh, from the book, we are going to read from the book of John chapter 15 and I request maybe we have two people, uh, a gent and a lady uh, and the gent will read from verse 1, that is uh, John 15 from verse 1 to 13 and then the lady will pick it over from verse 14 to 27, it has only 27 verses. That's what we are going to dwell on later today. So from the congregation, we can have uh, one giant, a volunteer, who wants to read for us. Thank you. And then we can have a lady who wants to read for us the scriptures today. A lady, well, you can be volunteered. Who wants to volunteer their neighbor? <laughs> okay, we can have a lady. Uh, the hand. Oh, come on, nice. So the judge the can start from verse 1 to 13, and then you have uh, the lady finishing from verse, 13, from verse 14 to 27. John chapter 15, from verse 1 to 13. I am the true vine, and my father, the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit is good, so that it should be. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself, it must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withered. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. Verse 7. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it shall be done for you. This to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing of yourselves to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love just as I have kept my father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be new and that your joy may be complete. My command is this love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this to lay down one's life for one's friend. You are my friend if you do what I command. John chapter 15, from verse number 15. Seven. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I have learned from my father and have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, and so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command love each other. Verse number 18. If the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first. If you belong to the world, it would have loved. If you belong to the world, it would love you as its own. As it is, you do not belong to the world. But I have chosen you out of the world. That is why the world hates you. Remember what I told you: a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you also. If they obey my teaching, they will obey you as also. They will treat you this way because of my name, for they do not know the one who sent me. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would not be guilty of sin. But now they have no excuse for their sin. Whoever hates me hates my father as well. If I had not done among them the works no one else did, they would not be guilty of sin. As it is, they have sinned, and yet they have hated both me and my father. But this is to fulfill what is in their law, they hated me without reason. Verse number 26, when the advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who goes out 
out from the Father who will testify about you. And you also must testify, for you have been with me from the beginning. Well, thank you. You can appreciate them. Sorry, I'll change my position that because this place is more anointed, uh, not just because of the, uh, my, the computer thing and the charger. Now, this morning, this is a very beautiful, you can call it a simile, a metaphor, or you can some call it a parable, some call it a story, but it's very interesting. And at the core, it has the very basics and the very gist of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And this morning, it's a privilege for us to open the scripture together. And uh, it's, it's loaded, it's heavy. And I pray that the Lord is, is going to help us even to, to understand and get what He's going to speak to us this morning. Father, we, we are so grateful that, Lord, you have given us indeed the grace to be used in your house, the grace to serve you, the grace to worship, the grace to lift your name. Oh, Father. And so this morning, you have gathered us this morning. Lord, I pray as you unravel the truth concerning you and your son Jesus, the true vine, the vine dress, and us as the branches. Lord, will you help us to comprehend, Lord? Would you open our hearts to be fruitful this morning? Souls that, Lord, will keep what this morning you're going to unleash to us. So Holy Spirit, this is your place. Just use us and speak to us. In Jesus' name, every prayer and give thanks. So this morning as you're going to journey uh, through this exposition, I've, I've given it like four subtitles just to help us to understand because it's very large and sometimes when you, read, when you read it, the only thing that you are able to remember so fast is about abide, vine, because it's, it's very repetitive. Abide and vine, they are very repeated in this excerpt. But this morning, as we are going to do an exposition, number one, I will start with the dilemma in interpretation of this text. That you are not the first ones who have come across this excerpt and tried to, to, try to do an exegesis or to try to do an interpretation of this excerpt. But number two, I will come and now we will do, um, we will dive in deeper and see what is the context of this excerpt? And then from the, de the concept, I'll come and then we'll do maybe the distinction between the various um, aspects and the relationship, like you know, the true vine, the vine dresser, and the branches. What is the relationship and what is the distinction in between? And also the distinction will also come, what does it mean to be pruned? What does it mean to be fruitful? What does it mean to abide in the vine. And then finally, we will do the evidence of ab abiding in the true vine. And then we will call it a good day. Now, brothers and sisters, this, this excerpt, many a times when theologians read, there is always a debate that has been going on and up to today, that debate is still on. And the debate is, can someone lose their salvation? Mostly when people read, you know, every branch that does not bear fruit, my father cuts it off. I think that John Calvin, the greatest Calvinists that ever lived, they still debated about this thing. Can someone lose their salvation if they belong to Jesus Christ? Number two, we have also people who have tried to explain this exact and taken it to the extreme. One of them was in the 13th century by the name of Pope, Pope Gregory, the, the, Pope Gregory the Sixth, who had a dream of uniting the Eastern and the Western Europe. But for him to unite the two distinct uh, states, what he wanted to do was actually to use what Jesus said to fulfill his own desires. What, what did he use? For him, he said that actually, that because Jesus has said that any branch that does not bear fruit will be taken away. So for him, he decided 
to be the one who is going to purge the church by actually burning up people and taking them into uh, uh, and taking them into jails just because he wanted to make and to apply what he has learned in the Bible. And for this reason, there was a lot of war that actually came up, and the great violence and mayhem were actually experienced in Europe because of Pope, Pope Gregory the Sixth. And by the way, this is just to bring to attention that be very careful. No wonder I always add students, let us be students of the scriptures. That you don't just run when you hear about vine, about the about, about vine, about the branches, about the vine dresser. Lo and behold, you are running left, right, center preaching, yet you have that we have not understood about the concept of which Jesus was speaking this excerpt. One guy in Baringo, he read an excerpt from the book of Matthew chapter 5, where it says, you know, if your hand causes you to sin, what does it say? Chop it. If your hand causes you to sin, chop it, God it out. And this guy now, what he did exactly, because he was struggling with the issues of sexuality, he decided because Jesus said, that if anything is troubling you, go take it up. He did exactly that. He castrated himself. It was actually uh, two years ago. And, and friends, but number three, the dilemma that we have in interpreting this text is not only that we have people who take it to the extremes, but this text sometimes it brings issues mostly in doing our exegetical analysis in terms of trying to to unravel what does the uh, what does the vine mean? Um, what does it mean to abide in the vine? What can cause fruitfulness? And for this, these are some of the questions that actually linger in our minds when we read this excerpt. And my friends, I can tell you the truth: it's also not easy to abide in the vine. And by the way, this morning I'll tell you that the greatest challenge that we are facing and the greatest battle of this generation is just to abide in Jesus Christ. It's not to preach, it's actually abiding. It is the greatest battle, the greatest struggle facing the second century or the first. It is abiding in the vine. And this morning, it's a privilege just to cover this with us. Now, the context, the first thing that we must do is to bring justice and understanding where Jesus is coming from when he's actually speaking this, this parable, this story. In chapter 13 of the book of John, Jesus has a last supper with his disciples. And that is the point whereby he, t he picks a towel and, you know, he wraps himself and he starts washing the disciples' feet. And immediately after that, he also predicts that you know what, I'm going to die. But in your midst, there's also a traitor. And that is Judas Iscariot. And of course, Peter tries to say, you know, Jesus, no matter what happens, Peter is a you know, Peter is a sangry. No matter what happens, that can never happen to me. I'll not allow it. By the way, and Peter used to work with us all, you know. He always was ready. So when he was saying this, he, he, maybe he was thinking in his mind, I'll be able to defend my Lord with this sword that I have. But again, after that, again, in chapter 14, Jesus tries to explain the gist of the gospel by telling them, you know, I'm going, but it's for your benefit, guys, I'm going, it's for your benefit. You know, that because I'm just going, but it's just for your benefit that I'm going. And now we come to chapter 14, 15 now, where now he's telling us now the gist, he's telling them, now you know what, guys, this is a part I want to give you about the vine, the vine dresser, and actually the bearing of fruits that, that, that the Lord ex ex expects from us. Praise the Lord. And so, Jesus, after, remember, Judas Iscariot is living, and already he has told them that there is actually a manuscript to someone who is going to betray him. And after 15, what happens in chapter 16, is actually leading him to get some money, and from get some money, that's where he's going to be arrested. So this is a, this is a very important point of Jesus' journey that is coming to. And now he has spoken about Judas. 
He said, and, 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 and the, the disciples were very curious. Who is that? And he said to give them a hint. The one that lift his bread and give him, that's the person who is going to betray. Right. And friends, this morning, my heart is just hungry to hear from us. That are you connected or are you attached? There's a difference. Judas was amongst the disciples of Jesus Christ. By the way, even he was actually a keeper of all the finances. Which means this person, he even, do you remember in, in the book of uh, Matthew 10, whereby Jesus he sends them out to go and preach. And also it is found in the book of Mark 6. He sends them that the God preach. And I bet Judas was also one of them. Judas also accompanied the disciples. He was among the disciples. He followed Jesus wherever he went as one of the disciples. But he was never connected with Jesus. Praise the Lord. But he was attached. And this morning I'm, I'm coming to that. And so this morning, understand that point that Jesus Christ is coming from. But also he's pointing to them that he, is, he has a place that he's going. He has a place. He has a place. And the lesson that he wants them to pick is this. That as long as I am going, that there is a need for you always to abide in me. There is a need for you always not to lose focus because I want to be here physically. But I don't want you guys to lose your focus on me. I want your focus always to remain on me. Because where I am going, and I send the counselor that will always teach you and direct you and speak and take everything from me and give it to you. Praise the Lord. And so this morning, the same thing happens. As you are reading the scripture, and that's why when it starts, now let us go to the gist of the matter. In chapter 15, it starts very beautifully. I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener or the vine dresser. Two things here. Jesus refers to himself as the true vine. Refers to himself as the true vine. And remember, this is actually, if, you, if someone reads the book of John very well, you realize that the seventh thing that Jesus says, I am, I am, I am, and this is not the seventh part, I am the true one. If you read in chapter 2, it tells, it tells them, I am the temple, I am the true temple. In chapter 4, it tells them, I am the water, I am the true living water. In chapter 6, it tells them, you know, I am the true living bread. In chapter 8, he tells them, you know, I'm the light of the world. And chapter 1 is also repeated. I am the light, I am the true light of the world. In chapter 10, he comes again and tells them, you know, I'm the good shepherd. I am, I am, it's just repeated, it's just repeated. Which is actually a name that stands, that stood for Yahweh. And this is so important for you to understand the deity of Jesus Christ. There are people who struggle with the deity of Jesus Christ. So is he God, is he God, is he not God, is he less? Where does it belong in the, in, the, in the part of Trinity? I'm not trying to capture the Trinity. But one thing I want to tell you that Jesus, He Himself, He was God and He is God. Praise the Lord. And do you know about all of that? But only that, do you understand if Jesus is God or not? He is God. He is God. The one that says that you see me and my Father, we are. We are. Yeah. What's happening in this conversation? Me and the Father, we are one. And Jesus says, you know what, whatever I do, I don't do it just because I'm doing it. But I do it, I do exactly what I hear, what I'm taught to do by my Father. So there's that mutual relationship between Jesus and and, and now, this morning, as we continue, we will hear a lot of this morning. So, as we prepare, so you'll hear a lot of this morning, this morning. So, the distinction and the relationship. First, I've told you that we have the vine, we have the vine dresser, and we have the branches. 
the true vine because he is the true one who was sent by God. He was the true one. And this was so important because later on, if you read the Old Testament, you understand that the, 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 the nation of Israel was referred to as the vine of the Lord. Can you open a scripture? Can you read Isaiah chapter 5? Just only with that, Isaiah chapter 5. Someone read for us Isaiah chapter 5 from verse 1 to verse 7. It's very interesting about the song concerning the Bible. But also as they are continuing to grow, 
There, there are a lot of side branches that come up, that intertwine in each other. And also, by the way, even the, they themselves they also intertwine. But we have also uh, a branch that grows sideways, which actually they don't produce fruits. That's a very uh, a good thing to note about the, the, the vine. That there are branches which actually are sideways, but they never produce anything. And for you to experience continuous bearing of fruit from the vine, you must always be deliberate about pruning it. In fact, it is actually pruned twice in a year, in April and in December. But by the way, you know, we don't have uh, vines here. They're only found in Palestine. Um, but that is what many historians will tell us, that they, 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 they are pruned twice in a year and they're very productive. They're very productive. Let me spare you this. Uh, there's, there's a, one historian was trying to say even the kind of lightning that is needs for this uh, for these grapes to continue flourishing, because it says grapes actually uh, are thrive in uh, in brightest sunshine and the heavy dew of the Palestine led summers. And during its cultivation, we have, whereby, now I told you that we have branches who don't produce fruits. Those branches are gathered together and they are burned. Those branches, by the way, the branch of a vine, it's a very weak branch. It can't be used for anything much. It's a very, very weak branch. And by the way, even Moses commanded the Israelites, so you're bringing in woods, don't bring the branch of a vine. Because it can't be used for anything. So they actually are gathered together and burned up because they can't be used for anything that is worthy uh, uh, as such. Are you getting the distinction first before diving into the main, main thing that I want us to, to grasp and battle with? So I've spoken about the true vine, who is Jesus Christ himself. And Jesus Christ is the true vine because Israel failed to accomplish the promises of God. But he came and fulfilled that. Number two, we have also the vine dresser. Who is the father? The father himself calls himself here as the vine dresser. The vine dresser has his role. His role, number one, is actually to, uh, to provide security for the vine because he is the gardener. So he takes care. He takes care of the vine. And by the way, even in those days in Palestine, there are days where actually we, people had to take guard of the vine against, uh, against the, what's the name this name? There's a very uh, hard name here of an animal. Is it a fox or what? Yeah, foxes. Foxes, foxes and jackals. So they had to take guard against this, these foxes and jackals. And we come and attack the vine when actually the fruits are ripe. So the same way we have a gardener. And the gardener, apart from, his, apart from just providing security, he has also two major important roles. Number one is actually to cut off any branch that does not bear fruit. And number two, it is to prune any branch that bears fruit that it might be more fruitful. And that is the work of the vine dress. That it prunes, it takes away. Any branch in me that does not bear fruit. But number two, he also prunes those branches that are very productive. Praise the Lord. And now, let me go. What, what does it mean to be pruned? Because we say that the father has two roles. And role number one is cutting off any branch that does not bear fruit. And number two is actually to prune uh, every branch that produces fruit. He cuts off every branch in me that does, does not bear fruit, while every branch that bears fruit he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. This is one of the best concepts that a Christian can ever hear being spoken by the Father. 
that the father is so eager. He is so expectant to see us being productive and fruitful. He is so expectant. His heart is always yearning to see our lives flourishing. Our lives representing Him. Our lives lighting up. Just lighting up the fragrance of Jesus wherever we go. That is what is always interested in, in seeing that is coming from us. There is a problem here. They are Christians. I call them showy Christians. Who they, are, they look greener, very green. Look at them, they are very much passionate about ministry. They are doing things in the kingdom of God. But they are not bearing things in the kingdom of God. They are not bearing things in the kingdom of God. There are so many churchy Christians today who attend church Sitting in church, sitting in church, praying in church, but their lives are fruitless. But their lives are not showing forth that actually they are truly born again. And the Lord will always one in a way. Will always come to us in those moments when we have lost our passion, when we have lost our focus on Him, and He will try to prune us. He will try to prune us every time, whether you lose it or not. The whole God will come to you and lift you and open up your eyes to see Him if you have lost your spiritual sharpness. But listen to me very carefully as you continue in rebellion, as you continue in you know, abiding in the fire of obeying the not obey what the Lord Jesus tells you, there's a possibility of you even not coming back to the king. And that is the hardest truth in history. It has brought people at loggerheads. At loggerheads of okay. And we might cover this topic in verse the last year. But I said, can someone lose their salvation within Jesus Christ? But Jesus Christ will always try to disturb us in our complacency. He will always try to lift us up, always. That the same way when the weak branch of a vine falls down, the vine dresser will come and put a tree and lift it up. He will try always when we are fallen to just try to bring us up to always experience the beauty of abiding and resting in the Lord. And the only thing that Jesus expects from us is just for us to respond in repentance, for us to respond in obedience, for us to respond with one voice. Yes, Lord, I am here. Mold me as right. But if you choose, however, to go according to your heart desires, if you choose, however, to go according to what your mind thinks is right, oh brother, oh sister, that is treacherous, that is dangerous. There is always a sin that leads to death from the book of First John 5.16. And they are living a generation that thinks that sins are going to be plenty. They think sin are carries to be chilled. But they don't know how treacherous, how, 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 how enslaving sin is. They don't know. And by the way, listen to me, as I told you, it's the biggest challenge you are having in the generation is to abide in the fight. It's a challenge, it's a big problem because people are playing games with sin. The Father will always be there. Not only he lifts the, the branch up when it falls, not only does he prune it more, how does it prune it? By the way, pruning is the same word for cleansing in Greek. What is repeated there, I read it. There's a word that says cleansing. He cleanses by the word. It's the same word, he prunes us by the word. 
He throws us by the word. They won't look unto the mirror, which is the word of God. They won't look like Christ. They won't look by in the fire. Because you're always reflecting, you're always looking unto the word of God that has power to transform and to make you into conformity of his dear son Jesus. He cleanses the branch that it might produce more fruit. Listen to me. It's so hard to live a Christian life producing the gift, the fruit of the Holy Spirit. It's so hard when you don't abide, when you don't depend on Jesus Christ, when you don't live according to His word, when you don't hear Him. It's so hard. It's so hard. Have you ever had people telling you Christianity is the hardest thing that I've ever done? Do you know why it's so hard? The day we start abiding and depending solely on Jesus Christ. The day we stop focusing and spending time with Jesus, Christianity becomes a man. Because it's not by might, not by power, but by own, by spirit. Praise God. And that's the secret. That's the secret. Do you want to live a victorious Christian life? Abide. Rest, rest, rest in Christ. Rest in Christ Jesus. The word of God is like a mirror. The word of God is like a knife. Hebrews 4 12. It's like a knife. It's the only that can judge your thought. The heart of man is desperately wicked, friends. The heart of man is desperately wicked. Our minds are desperately wicked. But we must allow the word of God, which is the power of God, the knife to sharpen us every day. Every day. To make us to conform into the likeness of Jesus Christ. And for those who have done farming, they know how we how we do how we farm tomatoes. When tomatoes are break up, you have also branches which are called suckers. And unless you remove the suckers and break them, the tomatoes will be weak, they will wither, they will not even produce. It's a, by the way, pruning may sound harsh. Pruning may sound as something that you know it's, it's, it's something that must say you want to run away. You want to run away. Because you feel here when I read the Bible, Jesus keeps on prompting me to live things. He keeps on prompting me to do this. The Bible keeps on cutting my heart. So you're feeling this journey. Oh God, just let me be. Just let me be. Just let me enjoy my life. So you're feeling you want to shut off from every day approaching his presence because you feel every day when you approach him, he's telling you things concerning your life. Then I'm not there, you are going to pray for the Holy Spirit. But every time you pray, every time you are going to pray, the only thing God could speak is, man said, Paul change this, Paul change this, Paul leave this. And maybe as the Lord speaks to you like that, is because he loves you. Pruning may, may look as something that needs to be up, it needs to be to be shunned or needs to be run away from. But pruning is the one that actually makes us to be fruitful because the more if our sin is taken away, listen to me. You can never be in the presence of the light and the darkness always continues to be seen. Every day when you look with, in the mirror of God, every day when you look in, when you have when you have communion with Jesus Christ every day. He looks at your heart. Does he pour your brow? Does he pour this is not the fruit? I want you to be. He looks at you and tells you by your brow, you have missed it. They see me a change. It has the poor one that was speaking minds change here. And the more and the more he tells you, and the more you're crying every day, oh help me, the more you reflect him, the more you reflect him, but because of your own. Because he is doing it in your life. Listen to me. If you have an issue abiding in the vine, by the way, God, because I've just realized I have no time, you can just summarize it. If you have no time to abide in the Lord, there is a big problem.
is a tragedy to be born physically challenged, right? And you think that is the biggest problem. But it is, the biggest problem is when you can't hear God speaking to your life. The biggest problem is when you can't hear God leading you in every day as you go to life. It's the biggest tragedy of your life. But as someone who's born with physical talent, that you yourself being spiritual, that you can't hear God, you can't listen, you can't understand His voice, is the worst. It's the worst. Foot bearing, foot bearing, foot bearing depends, it commands, it demands that you only cling to the heart. It's only clean. And brothers and sisters, we can't be a fit without Him, without Jesus, the true vine. We can't. I've seen, two, I've seen people who have lost their spiritual sharpness. But what they do, they fill that hole with something else. They think if I sing so much, they think if I give too much, they think if I preach too much, then that hollowness in my heart that has left me will be filled. No, you're checking yourself. The only way to regain your spiritual sharpness every day you find yourself, oh Lord, I'm down. Oh Lord, I'm down. Is only to go to Him. He faces us, He revives us. It's the only way. For bearing depends on us availing ourselves. By the way, you know what? The only thing that was meant for the branch was to bear fruit. The sole purpose, the vine can't bear fruit. It's only the branches. The sole purpose why God called us is just to be a fruit for Him. But listen, this fruit that we bear is not by our own accord or power or effort. It's just by depending on the vine for spiritual nourishment, for power, for strength, for gifting of the Holy Spirit, for the peace of mind. And when we go, we are full and we serve in His power. There is a God. But that is the only thing that Jesus expects from us. Is the only
No matter how hard you pray and sing, see, see, as you are feeling the heaven has come down for you, it's not heaven. It's actually jokes with me. Because you're not connected with him first. But when you be connected, even the empty, when you find only one person, you'll be happy to run up there like a madman. Because you know, oh God, I've come to meet with you, I've come to meet with you. Fellowship will entrust you, but the question is, does fellowship entrust you? Not only fellowship with the Lord, but fellowship with brethren. As in, are you growing in fellowship? Are you growing? Or nowadays, even you're shining off. Yeah, nowadays, you're shining off from many friendships. But also, there's loss of life. You lose the vitality or the life that the branch, that, 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 that the vine gives to us. You lose it. You become so dry, so dry, so dry. You become so dry. But the Lord helps us. What does it mean to abide? What does it mean to abide? What does it mean to abide? That now that's the biggest. What does it mean to abide? Of course, I've spoken about it, but just a repetition of it. What does it mean to abide? There's a lot of commission here in Ken. In the early centuries, some missionaries came from the US. They built a house in one of the remote places. And that missionary had come with a generator and some bulbs. So for, for, for that missionary, in, the, in his house, he had set up, um, he had actually wired his house, um, uh, you know, just, just to get some electricity and light. And so this, this local missionary, one day he visited this guy. And after visiting him, he noted, hey, this bulb is, is just shining so bright. It's shining so bright, they requested for the bar. So the mission said, hey, this thing, I wish I had one in my house. So please, help me burn bar. Without even understanding the concept behind electricity or behind power. So the mission was so quick, he gave the guy an extra bar. So the person went to his house, he set the bar in the same position the mission had done in his house. But now the only problem was it could never promise any event. So one day they're having a fellowship and they're going to visit this other guy there, the local missioner, and, the, and, and this, uh, this, this frontier guy, he is surprised that, you know, this man we gave him, you have put it up here, but it's not shining because you never understood the concept behind it. So, so, Said, abiding in the farm is just like that. For electricity is mechanical, but Jesus is speaking about life-giving connection, not just light, life-giving connection. Now listen to me, that He is the source. He is the source. He is the source of everything. He is the source. He is the source. This word remain is used more than 20 times in the Bible. 61 times is used as abide. 16 times is used as just remaining. 15 times is used as, like as dwelling, a dwelling place. 15, 11 times is used as, as continue, continue. Abiding is just continue, continue. And 9 times is used as study, waiting. And 3 times is used as endure. So it has, it, it has a couple of meanings, dwelling place, that you are making the Lord to be your dwelling place, that you have chosen to remain in Him, that you have chosen to continue trusting the Lord, that you have, you have chosen to endure no matter what comes ahead of you. You are still abiding in the Father. Don't let me skip on these verses. But the problem why we can't abide in the vine? The problem is this: we are sowing in the wrong place. We are sowing. We are actually putting our energies in the wrong place. We are sowing towards the wrong place. We are sowing towards things that can pass away. We are sowing towards things that cannot give us even the satisfaction of this life.
And that's why Jesus would say, Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Because all that is in the world, the desire of the flesh and the desire of the eyes, the arrogance produced by material possession is not from the Father, but is from the world. We are sowing in the wrong position. We are sowing in the wrong place. We are not sowing towards expanding, towards growing in life in the Lord more. We are not sowing that. But now we are sowing towards things that are passing away. The world. We are sowing towards sin also. And that's why Jesus will remind us in the book of 2 Peter chapter 2 from verse 7 and the delivered righteous Lord who was oppressed by the filthy conduct of the wicked for that righteous man dwelling among them tormented tormented his righteous soul from the day to day seeing and hearing their lawless deeds 2 Peter 2 7 that in fact God is calling us to be tormented not to embrace sin but to be tormented with sin is your heart tormented when you see people sinning? Oh, oh, friends, listen. Is your heart tormented when you see people sinning? If it is not, there's a problem. There's a problem. There's a problem. Is your heart tormented, sad, when you see people sinning left, right, center? Well, there's a lot of they don't know, but is your heart tormented? And are you tormented when you fall? Because if, if you lose that sweetness, there's always that sweetness that Jesus just puts in you. Never lose that. And it's a gift, by the way. Don't condemn it. It's a gift that you can feel. That you feel sad and people see that you want them to come to the knowledge of Jesus. And you feel convicted of you yourself. You have fallen away. It's a sweetness. And if you have lost that, oh, I urge you, you need to come back to the Lord. Brethren, we are so jealous and pagans. And Peter will also tell us, abstain from fleshly lusts, which will war against the soul, having your conduct vulnerable among the Gentiles, that when they, they speak against you as evil Jews, they may, they may, by your good works, which they observe, glorify God in the day of visitation. He says, remember that you are pilgrims on this earth. So soul towards eternity, oh soul towards eternity, panda, panda, soul towards eternity and the kingdom of God. Be conscious of soul towards the world, towards the sin, towards material possessions. And there are people today, today who are their hearts and their purpose they think is to make money. Oh my friend, we are lost. Yesterday, uh, today I was preaching about purpose in Tuxi. I don't even know what. The only thing that Jesus expects from us is absolute surrender. And someone asked me, Paul, I just remember like that. I told her, yes, just like that. Sometimes we don't surrender because of our pride. We don't talk about because of our pride. Sometimes because of our fear and doubt. But Lord, if I give you this fear of my life, oh Lord, I'll be duped. I'll be... No, he knows it. Surrender that we surrender the spirit to him. It is just like that. Yes, just like that. You surrender just like that. And you let him be the driver. That you let him be the steerer of your life just like that. Just like that. Listen, there are many people who don't find joy. Because you want to play God, you can never. You want to play God, you can never. You have to be in control of your life. That is headed. You can never be in control of your life. I know someone, my, my, my greatest thing was actually surrendering to Jesus my life and my everything I told him you know last year when I finished him I went for seven months just preaching and I rejected jobs everywhere and I was receiving jobs just preaching preaching the gospel January came and the Lord told me this January there's a place I'm taking 
And it's so, so clear. I gave a testimony in the church. I told my aunt, because I was actually uh, working something for her. I told her, aunt, this year, by January, you won't see me at home. But that conviction came and I was in prayer in the Lord. He said, that way he governs your life. Listen, he governs it. He governs it. Material possessions, everything that you, anything that you want to give you a meaning will never give you a meaning. To leave you high and dry. To just leave you high and dry. <coughs> it is casting crowns of seeds. That I ran to the world thinking that I'd find everything I wanted. But all it found, all I found, and all it did to my life, it just left me high and dry for more. The world will always leave you high and dry for more. But the Lord will leave you peaceful, joyous, at peace. Because those things the world can never give, it is only Him that He gives. And listen, brothers and sisters, Jesus has chosen to give you something that never the world can give. Never. The things that nothing else can give. Nothing. Nothing. Money can buy you a house, but it can never buy you a home. It can buy you medicine, but it can never buy you health. Money is not everything. It's not everything. It's not everything. Trust in the Lord. 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 In the Lord. And you connect to your attachment. And you connect to your attachment. Just attachment. You're just there. But there's no connection. You will never produce until you are connected to the Lord. Not by effort, not your effort. Just on the Lord. Lord, Lord, I need to be connected. I've been attached for long. I need to be connected. I need to be connected to you. Because sometimes you come to the vine and you tell the vine, we come to the branch and tell the branch, start producing. Start producing. You know, it's just like going to, to a mango tree and you find that it's not producing the mangoes and then you shout at it. Hey, mango, produce, produce, produce. You can never produce. It's until you cultivate it. The same way. Come to the Lord. Tell the Lord, not God, I want to, to be connected to you. It is, as I wind up, one of the poets by the name of Marcus Nell, Nettleson put it, he said, one by one I took I took them from me, all the things I valued most, until I was empty-handed, every glittering toy was lost, and I walked up highways, grieving in my rags and my poverty, till I heard this voice inviting, oh, lift those empty hands to me. So I held my hands towards heaven, and he filled them with a store of his own transcendent riches, till they could contain no more. At last I, compre I comprehended with my stupid mind and doubt that God could not pour his riches into the hands that are full. Sometimes, us failing to abide the mind because we think we have all. We have it. You think because you're a friend. You think because you have a beautiful girlfriend, uh, uh, either you have a handsome guy, you think that is life. You think now life, but yeah, I have had people say, because, because he is alive, I'll also be there. Listen to me. If you're banking your life on someone else, you have a problem. Sure. Some of us, it's because maybe our family background, they are good, and you think, ah, life is good, the world we're living. No. You're banking it in the wrong place. And the Lord says, empty yourself of that, and just become empty, and let Him fill you with His power, with His glory, with His presence, because it's full. And when you abide the vine, there are always evidences. I just mentioned, I want it. Evidences of abiding. Number one is fruitfulness. That the Lord has chosen you. He has chosen you to be, to be bought. Number two, and of course, I have, I have, number two is obedience. That you hear His word and you follow it completely and passionately. Hearing His word. And number four 
in his answered prayers. Verse 7 and verse 16. He said, when you are burdening me, when, you, when my words praise you, ask whatever you wish and I will give it. It's also for the glory of the Father that he gives you whatever you ask. Answer and prayers. When you are burdening the vine, you experience breakthrough in your prayers. Number four is a joyful life. A joyful life. When you are burdening the vine, there is always a joy that comes. The joy of salvation will always guide your heart. And the Lord will make sure that you experience that. No wonder the psalmist will say in the book of Psalm 1, Happy are they! Happy are they! Blessed! Blessed is that of the man who is happy. Blessed! Psalm 1, blessed are they! Blessed! But also number 4 is that you experience the love of Christ, the sacrificial love. You always enjoy that sacrificial love. But the matter number 6 is Love for one another. And the Lord also spurs you to love people, to love one another. The Lord has said that as a command, love one another. Are you loving people? That's an evidence that you are binding in the vine. But also you become a witness of the gospel. You become a witness. But for the seven will just tell us, you know what, the Holy Spirit will come and rest on you and make you to proclaim the gospel of Jesus to all the nations. But lastly, it is all for the glory of God. When you are in the vine, everything you do, you do it for the glory of God. Whether you are studying, whether you are eating, whether you are sleeping, whether you are walking, whether you are at home, you do it for the glory of God alone. And you do it for the glory of God, verse 8. All this is for the glory of God. Not for you, not for any person, not for the sin, but for the glory of God. When you abide in the fire. Praise the Lord. Can you stand up and come to the table? I'll invite you to, to continue this series. Read the book called The True Vine by um, and who is this name? Andrew Murray. The True Vine. It is a book that you read as a devotional for one man. Focus as a Bible. It's a, a small book like this. On the reflections from John 15. But it leaves you breathless. It's so deep. It's so deep. My friends, today, my challenge is to, to us. Are you connected? Are you hearing God as He speaks to you? Are you still maintaining your spiritual favorness and sharpness? Are you still in that level? That you are loving the Lord more? You are loving Him more every day. Are you loving the Lord more? I just give you a minute. Just pray wherever has touched your heart. That Lord connect to you. Connect me to you, Lord. Connect me to you. And if you have lost your spiritual Shall we see the time that the Lord, Lord, oh Father, fill this gap, fill it with your power, fill it, Lord, fill it, fill it, Lord. Oh Lord, oh Father, where can you go? And you only, you're the only one who has the words of God. Oh Father, I cry for myself. I want to be connected more to you. I want to love you, oh Lord. I want to love you. I want to love you, O oh Father, O oh Spirit of God, who is past to love you, O oh, who is past, O oh, Holy Spirit, to love you, O oh, to love the Lord more, who oh, is past to reject the world, who oh, is past to live as sojourners, who oh, is past, O oh, Father, to reflect you in our day to day life, who oh, is past to be faithful, who oh, is past, O oh, Father, to bear the fruit of the Holy Spirit, love, peace, patience, who oh, is past, O oh, Father, who oh, is past, Lord. Holy Spirit, and then I pray, the Lord, thank you, Lord. If you feel that and you feel like, Lord, my spiritual life is not in the place it's supposed to be. My spiritual life is dying, is dying, is dying. It's not there. It's not there, Lord. I want a revival in my spiritual life. This is the time. You can just shoot that hand. And I'll tell you. You feel like my spiritual life is just declining. I've tried all things. I've tried many. 
that the Lord and one you touch my spiritual life and revive it again. He is able, he is powerful, and he can do that. You can just raise that hand and we'll pray with you as you conclude this service. Thank you for that hand. Thank you for that hand. You know, the Lord is able, he is able to revive you and to give you uh, that peace that you are desiring. Let's pray. Lord, Father, the, that hand, that, those hands, and this life that we celebrate you. Would you help us? I pray that Lord you, you can cause life where there was death. Would you revive that desire for you? Would you revive that thirst for you, Lord? All for your glory, Father. I pray that the Holy Spirit will just find you, will find you, will find you, will find you, just this power, will find you, this love, will find you, this affection, will find you, this power, strength for you to arise. So, Lord, thank you that you're working in our lives. Thank you. And we trust you, Lord, Lord. Help us to live in accordance to your desire. Because you are a good God. So, Lord, bless the sea and bless us in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can I appreciate the Lord? Um, you can have our seats, please. Um, May the Lord help us to love him all. Um, this juncture, it's a special time. Um, and I want to welcome um, some two sisters of mine who are here today. Um, that is um, Lucy. Uh, Lucy and Nekesa. Just to join me here uh, on the pulpit. Um, you can appreciate them as they come and see where they are coming. Lucy, that's how time flies. Um, I was the former STEM staff here, by the way, for those who don't know. Uh, this year has also molded me in a way, in a greater way, and maybe to desire to serve God more in a more passionate way. Uh, so, Lucy, um, Lucy, took over from me, that is last year, right? Last year. The ending of last year. And I'm so proud of what the Lord has enabled me to accomplish. Every time when I read her prayer letters, my heart is just softened and divided that the Lord is working even through her in this location. So I'm so proud of you. Thank you for serving the Lord so faithfully. And I'll give you this opportunity to welcome Nekesa. Nekesa Karimu Sana. This is a beautiful and warm scene. Very warm. Karimu Sana. Simbo. Am I lying? See, maybe enjoy. Yeah. And Lucy also. So let me give this chance to Lucy to introduce her. And also maybe just to say two or three words. Thank you so much, Paul. Uh, good morning, everyone. Buona sifiwe. Yes, it's a joy to stand once again here. I've stood many times. But this moment reminds me last year, a time like this almost, but it was on July when I was introduced by Paul and I was here, um, just came to say hello before I officially joined the STEM, STEM program. Yes, uh, in Focus Kenya, because I think that's where we start, because even as at now, there are people who still ask me, the year I am. And so to stop that, and also say with Naomi, uh, it's better to start that the Fellowship of Christian Union, uh, it's, it's an organization and a, an umbrella body that links and networks all the Christian unions in institutions of higher learning. So a Christian union in main campus, the, a Christian union in Marcelo University, and other Christian unions in colleges, they are linked by focus. And so they are member CEOs in focus, Christian unions that are affiliate of focus. 
And so in focus, they, they, um, the main um, core values for focus is, you know, discipleship, evangelism, mission, leadership development, and many more. And so that to achieve all this, we work with the Christian unions that are affiliates and others that are my members just to see the Christian students grow in their leadership skills, grow in their discipleship, grow in their missions, grow in evangelism. And so there is a program that is called STEM, which is Short Term Experience in Ministry. And this program is given to uh, graduates, fresh graduates for that matter. And uh, these graduates are given opportunity to serve among the Christian unions. And so every year, there are graduates that join the STEM program every year so that they are sent to the field and the fields are the Christian institution, I mean the Christian unions in institutions of higher learning. And so I was one of them who was there and has been serving for one year, that is from 2019, uh, 2018 last year to this year, July last year, uh, uh, August last year to July this year. And before that was Paul, who served 2017 to 2018. And so now my time is coming to an end in the next month. And so someone else is coming in as the next STEM staff for main campus and Chiroma, Chiroma Campus Christian Union. And that person is none other than Naomi, who, who is here with me. Yes, Queens, again we have a Queen, last time Caleb, Zahu, uh, really celebrating having Paul and Alia on having still um, here. So we'll be having Naomi with us officially from next month, but one that is in August, who will serve with us for another one year. And so please, I ask you to continue supporting Naomi as you have supported me. You welcome me so warmly and I felt at home. And I agree that this is a place home away from home. Yes, it's actually home away from home. I feel sad not because of anything else, but because my time is coming to an end. But I pray that the Lord will give me another opportunity to always interact with you. You are warm people, you are so, you know, you are loving and you are very welcoming. God bless you, I want to give Naomi a chance so that she can say hello and probably introduce herself, the campus she has been, and even the course she did. Welcome, Naomi. Praise God. Uh, yeah, it is so wonderful to be introduced with so great people, you know. <laughs> It is not easy, but I thank God for them. They made it. So I'm sure and I'm encouraged that the Lord is going to work with me. And we are going to cooperate for the sake of the gospel of God. Praise Jesus. Yes, Wekesa Naomi is my name. A former student of Moy University West Campus. I did become in accounting option. Praise Jesus. Yes, and um, yeah, they are, I said that the chairperson and I'm trusting the Lord that is going to work with us together for this one year in ministry. I know at the time I'm expecting challenges, but I'm sure that the grace of the Lord is going to be sufficient. Bonus thing. Yes. So with, with time, as I will be able to resume to my station as from first of August, I'm very sure that we'll be able to interact with each other and be able to know each other more. I desire that I'll be able to know each one of us beyond their names. Yes. <laughs> to the queens, I'm sure you're going to be blessed, and to the cadets, you are going to be a cadet. <laughs> Blessed. 